Hey everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks in Unify 3.0.13, Ubiquity added WireGuard support. So in this video, we're gonna set up WireGuard, we're gonna create some firewall rules, and we'll also do some iperf test to see the speeds. If you're wanting to support my channel, the best way to do that is to hit the subscribe button. We're trying to hit 100,000 subscribers. And if you'd like to hire me for network consulting, you could visit my website in the description below. So there's a few reasons why we would wanna use WireGuard. The first one is speed. With WireGuard, we get higher speeds than we would with the L2TP VPN built into Unify. And the second one is we're able to use it with CG NAT or double NAT. So it makes it very easy to implement into your network. Also, WireGuard within Unify is very easy to set up. So let's get that done. The first thing we need to do, we need to click on the settings wheel in our Unify network console. And then we need to go over to teleport and VPN. Under VPN, we can see a couple different options. Teleport does have a back end of WireGuard, but we're not gonna be using teleport. We're gonna go down to VPN server and then create new. And here we can see WireGuard and L2TP. We will do speed comparisons between them, but I'm gonna give it a network name. I'll just call it WireGuard, so WG test. Here we have our private key and then we have our public key. And then it's asking us which server address we wanna go over, so which WAN connection. I'm gonna put in my WAN2 connection, but you could also enter it manually if you'd like. And we need to specify a port number. So I'm just gonna use the default WireGuard port which is 51820. Before we add a client, we're gonna go under the advanced because I wanna switch the subnet that this is running over. So currently the gateway is 192.168.2.1. I'm gonna put this at 200.1 and it's gonna be a slash 24. Now it says name server and we're gonna to want to enable this so we could resolve host addresses. And I'm gonna put it at 1.1.1.1 and 8.8.8.8. You could use whichever you want. If you have an internal DNS server, you could put that in here and then we'll do apply changes. Now back in the WireGuard VPN configurations, we're gonna add a client. This is gonna be an auto-generated client and you could do manual if you'd like. I'll give it a name of Cody and then we're gonna download the profile and then press create user. So with that user profile downloaded, we either need to email it to the person we want to use this WireGuard tunnel or do it through something like Signal. And I would do it through Signal as it's encrypted, but we need to import the tunnel into the WireGuard client. And this is just the WireGuard client for Windows. You could do it for iPhone and Android or Mac as well. And I'll put the link down below to that. So we're going to want to import the tunnel and I'll just grab the download from my downloads file. Now I've opened up the WireGuard profile within the WireGuard client. We could see that the status is inactive. We could see the public key, the address that we're given. So 192.168.200.3, the DNS servers, the public key, the allowed IPs, and then we could see the endpoint. So let's activate this. So let's activate the WireGuard VPN. I am on my backup internet that isn't connected to my UDM SE. So we are truly VPNing in. So let's press activate. And now we can see that the WireGuard tunnel is activated. So let's try to get to some resources on my network, like my Synology NAS. Now bringing up a command prompt, we should be able to get to my Synology NAS. So let's ping 192.168.10.220. And you can see that the ping replies are coming back to us. The issue with this, we could hit everything right now. We could hit all my cameras and we could hit everything on my management network, all my unified devices. So if we tried to hit a camera, we'll ping 192.168.30.122, which is my AI360. That will go through as well. So we need to create some firewall rules. But before we do that, let's do a perf test and a speed test. So I have speed test brought up and I'm gonna press go. All right, and the results were 51.19 megabits per second down and 33.37 up. The connection that I'm connected to is a gigabit by 30 or 40 upload speed. So this is decent for a VPN. Now my laptop has an iPerf server running on it, so let's run a test. So the computer I'm running an iPerf test on is connected directly by ethernet at one gigabit. So let's run the iPerf test. So we're getting 85.3 megabits per second down and up, which is pretty good for a VPN. And we will test with the L2TP. I quickly created an L2TP VPN. Let's test the iPerf. So I'll just press up and then press enter. All right, and we are getting 52.8 down and 52.7 up, which is about 30 megabits per second less than the WireGuard VPN. 
So the last thing we need to do, we need to create some firewall rules to block the WireGuard VPN from accessing other devices that we want. Really, I would only want this to access my NAS, so we'll create a rule for that. So the first thing we need to do, we need to create a profile for the WireGuard VPN subnet. So we'll go over to profiles, we'll scroll down, and then we'll create a new port IP group. I'm going to call this WG VPN, and this is going to be an IPv4 subnet. We'll put in the IP of the WireGuard subnet, so 192.168.200.0 slash 24, and then we'll press add and apply changes. Now we need to create two firewall rules. So we'll go to firewall and security. We'll go to create new rule. And for the type, it's gonna be LAN out. I'm gonna call this block WG to networks. We're gonna drop the traffic, and then our source is gonna be a port IP group of that new WireGuard VPN IP group. The destination is going to be a port group of RFC 1918. I've already had that created in other firewall rules, but I'll show you what that looks like. So this is the RFC 1918 group, and this is a white paper based on IPv4 private addresses. The first one is 192.168.0.0/16. The second one is 172.16.0.0/12, and the last one is 10.0.0.0/8. So we're still connected to the WireGuard VPN. Now, if we bring up a command prompt, we shouldn't be able to hit my Synology NAS. So I'll ping 192.168.10.220. And we can see that the ping replies aren't going through. I'll also try to hit that camera again at 192.168.30.122. So now we're completely blocked off of every single subnet. So we need to create an allow rule to allow the WireGuard VPN access to my Synology NAS. So we'll go back to the settings wheel, click on firewall and security, and then create new rule. The type is going to be a LAN out. The action will be to accept. The source is going to be the port group of the WireGuard VPN. And then the destination, we're just going to have it as an IP address of 192.168.10.220 and press apply changes. Even though we created the firewall rule of allow WireGuard to NAS, it is below the block wire guard to all my other networks. So what we need to do, we need to grab this rule and put it above the block. Now, if we go back to our command prompt, we should be able to hit my Synology NAS. And you can see that the ping replies are going through and we'd be able to get to any resource on that NAS. So that's going to be it for this tutorial on setting up WireGuard with Unify 3.0.13. It's fairly straightforward to do. I was expecting the speeds to be a little bit higher, but for a VPN, that's not too bad. If you have any questions about this video, please leave it in the comments below. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.